What's up, what's up, it's your boy. Um, so today, I want to talk a little bit about scripture and how it applies to our world, right? Because it's interesting, the, the dynamic of the world has changed a lot since the pandemic. The, since the pandemic, there's been a lot of anger, frustration, tension, um, a lot of conflicts, and constant complaining, to be honest. The... It's, it's, and the thing is, it's all over the place. It's from every different side. And it's because people spent a long time at home with nothing to do, right? But sit around on social media, finding things to get upset about, right? And me and the boys were doing our, we have this, we have this God's words of life men for men. It's a men's devotion. And me and the boys have been going through this <clears throat> almost daily. On certain days when mama's home, we kind of do a different devotion. We have a, a heroes in, from the Bible uh, devotion that we do but this one um me and the boys just do when mama has to work but it's cool because we really just dive into what it's going to take to be better men and you know kingdom minded men right to have a kingdom mindset and there's this um there's this whole section on character and in character <clears throat> you know aristotle defined character as the decisions a person makes when the choice is not obvious. Like sometimes there's an obvious choice, but sometimes, you know, you got to think about it and you got to, you know, and that defines who you are as a, as a person, right? My father used to say, character is the way we act when nobody's looking. Yeah, come on. I mean, we've all heard that before. My mom used to tell me all that all the time. She's like, what I do when I feel like she's not around really stands out as who I am, right? Because God's always with us. God's always, he sees everything. You can't can't hide from God, right? We saw that in the, in the garden with Adam and Eve. Like Adam was like, he felt guilty, he felt shameful, he felt naked, so he went and hid. And he's like, you know, uh, God's like, hey, Adam, come on, come out. And he's like, well, I was kind of ashamed. And he's like, wait a second, you're covered up. Why are you covered up? Who told you that you were naked? Because before, before his sin, he had no idea he was naked. Well, there's this interesting <clears throat> scripture right here from Philippians. <clears throat> Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, not only in my presence, but now much more in, the, in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God, it is God who works in you to will and to act accordingly to his purpose. It's God. It's God that wills you to act in his purpose, right? So do everything without complaining or arguing. Do everything without complaining or arguing. <laughs> so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God. Without fault in a crooked and depraved generation. In which you shine like stars in the universe. This is Philippians 2, 12 through 15. Okay, so um, I'm going to dissect this just a little bit, right? So... I talked to the boys about the concept and the idea because they're nine and ten. They're getting a little bit older. They're starting to hear more of what's going on in the world, you know. Um, I remember I was about ten years old. It was the first time I complained about a law um, because we moved into a neighborhood that it was required. I mean, I was riding a bike since I was like five, like riding a bike without training wheels or anything. Uh, I'm pretty sure I was about five, um, but. We moved into a neighborhood when I was 10 years old. My stepdad was in the army and we moved around and we moved into this neighborhood that they had a law, a law that said within that neighborhood, you were required to wear a helmet. You had to have a helmet to ride a bicycle. And so my mom was like, you know what? This is the law, this is what we're gonna do. I don't want y'all getting in trouble while y'all are out there. And me and my brother were just like, Man, we're gonna look stupid. I haven't worn a helmet since I was five. Wow, you know, since you know what, like my mom had us, you know, cover our dome when we were first riding without training wheels. But after we got the hang of it, yeah, we could scrap the helmet. It's no big deal. But at this point, it was kind of about the age that she started trusting us. We were in a good neighborhood. She started trusting us to go ride our bikes around the block, you know, as long as I kept an eye on my brother. We could ride together. But we had to follow this law, and I was like, man, this is ridiculous. We got a lot of complaints about that, right? We got a lot, I mean, talk about that in a little bit in my last post. 
just about the negativity in the world around us. But we got a lot of people complaining about rules, laws, guidelines, things like that. You know, I, I talked about this with a, you know, I talked about this with family and I've talked about this with a business partner that I had before. Like the reality is if you're in something together, right? And you've got one person who's calling all the shots, making all the decisions. That one person is solely responsible for said decisions if they're making the decision. But if the other person is intervening, interfering, going against the grain, then when things go left, that other person, man, you're responsible. You went against, you know, the plan. Now, if you're right, great. But if you're wrong, I mean, if you're right, it's fortunate that, that it worked out. That's great. But it's unfortunate that you had to go against the system. You had to go against your partner. You had to go against your family. You had, without a discussion and working it out, just work it out. Like say, hey, I'm bringing this to the table. You know, this is where we're at. We had a plan to do A, B, and C, but if you thought about X, Y, Z, you know, I mean, it's just a different way that I think might be more effective to get there. You know, but when you just go against it, then you're responsible for the consequences. It's all you because you went against what was set up, right? And so I like where it says, do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. You're blameless and pure because you just followed instructions. Now, some people tend to think we have a responsibility to stand up for what's right. That's a gray area though. You absolutely need to stand up for what's right. But see, we also, as Christians, as Christians, we need to think back to what did Jesus do? What, see, we the, remember them old school bracelets they used to have? You know, what would Jesus do? The WWJD? So, what would Jesus do? When well, Jesus' time, there were the Pharisees that were doing, they were the law, right? They were, they were the enforcers, right? So they were doing all this and that, and some of it wasn't exactly right. Some of it wasn't exactly wrong, but it was kind of, you know, and so Jesus, he didn't make a big stink about it. Like, right? Jesus was just like, hey, I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm spreading the gospel. He started spreading, you know, how people should behave themselves, how people should carry themselves, teaching people how to live their lives and how to do things the right way, right? He also, amongst his many teachings, he always used these cool parables, right? Because he used these cool parables to set up a story, to set up a, an environment that you could be like, okay, if I was in that, you know what I mean? It was, uh, it was really incredible. If you go back and read the Gospels, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can read a lot of the parables that he did, and it's really incredible. But Jesus didn't go out fight the system. He didn't. You know, it says in the Bible, it says, Nobody comes into power that God didn't position, that God didn't allow to be there. God is omnipotent. He's omnipresent. God can do anything, right? God, he didn't want someone in power to take them out of power. Sometimes even not the best leaders, sometimes even bad leaders, sometimes even horrible ones, they were allowed that position for some kind of reason. Maybe we're supposed to learn something. Maybe we were supposed to come together. Maybe we were supposed to respond differently. Maybe, I mean, I don't, it's kind of hard sometimes to figure out what it was that was supposed to happen, especially in the moment. In retrospect, it's easier to see what you could have done, what you should have done, and what might have, what God might have been trying. I remember talking to a friend just recently and, they, and she was going through some struggles, trying to figure some things out. They've you know, acquired a new property. The property's got lots of problems. They've been trying to figure it out. And she's like, I feel like I keep spinning my wheels and I'm not getting there. And she's, she's a strong Christian. So she was just like, God, what are you trying to teach me? If you're trying to teach me something, let me in already. You know, just, just, just shout it at me. So I know, because I feel like I'm constantly put, putting through these tests and, I, and I'm not, I'm not seeing what the, the answer is, you know? Um, so she had the right mindset to the extent that she's like, I know if I'm in these trials and tribulations, these struggles and these obstacles, I'm supposed to be learning something. God's shaping me and molding me somehow, right? God's trying to build me into something. I mean, and when you think about it like that, then you think about, God's trying to do something in your life if you're going through things, right? So if he's trying to do something, 
maybe it's not as horrible going through that process. And especially when you look back and you're out of the process, while you're in it, it's always hard, right? So <clears throat> like you can take the, let's get back to the leaders, right? So you could take the story of like Saul. Saul at one point was a good leader, right? But then lost his way, right? And when God felt like he had lost his way and God's like, you know what? This man is not, he's not the leader he's supposed to be, right? He spoke to David and he assigned David like, hey, Saul, David, David's going to be the new king. That's it. David's going to be the new king, right? So he positioned a new, the new leader, right? When it was time, when it was the right time, he positioned a new leader. Sometimes we face obstacles, especially, like I said, throughout the pandemic and ever since the pandemic, there's, there's, there's a way, especially in America, in our nation, in our governmental system, there's a way to step up and fight for what's right. And there's another way that's not at all Christian. And social media is a big part of that problem. See, because this, this whole do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. Blameless and pure. If you're just following instructions, you're following your leader. As God says, follow the laws of man, of the, follow the laws, follow the laws of the leaders on earth as if they were spoken by me in heaven. So if your leader has set forth certain things, now I I find that to hard to wrap my head around in certain circumstances. I had a pastor that I knew back in Texas. He was an amazing pastor. A great guy. Just on fire for Jesus. Such a loving, passionate man so kind and always joyful he escaped from Nepal he was in prison because he read the Bible he was in prison because he believed in God and he was in prison he escaped from prison fleed to America sought asylum and then became a pastor in Austin Texas and every day he was just so joyful that he was able to wake up and read the Bible and share God's word and tell people about his love for Jesus. Such a great guy. So do I believe that he did the right thing by defying his leader and escaping? I think so. But did he get on Facebook or X or Instagram and sit here and just bash his leader and talk about all the many things that his leader is doing wrong? He did not. He didn't. He just escaped a tyrannical government and then started spreading the love of Jesus. I feel like he got it right. I feel like too many get it wrong. They don't like their governor. They don't like their mayor. They don't like their president. They don't like somebody in Congress. They don't like their vice president. They don't like this person, that person, whatever senator, representative. It's interesting because sometimes they'll like this guy but not that guy and, you know, it's weird. But it's okay. It's okay not to be fond of someone. It's okay not to like someone. That's, that's human. <clears throat> We're supposed to love even our enemies. Love our enemies. We're supposed to pray for our enemies. If we feel like a politician, one of the leaders in our country, is an enemy to our nation, an enemy to our way of life, an enemy to our faith, our family, our children. Then should you attempt to do something about it? I believe the answer is yes, but I believe that answer is a fine line because I believe do something about it means to actually do something about it. 
the people in the Bible that did something about it did not walk around complaining. They took action. All the people, even the Christians, Christians and non-Christians alike, that are using social media, Facebook, X, or even just gossiping with their family, that's not what Jesus would do. You've gotten it wrong. We have a responsibility to get it right. We have a responsibility to do our absolute best because how else are we going to win over the souls of the lost? Now, winning souls is Jesus' job, not ours. But we are to plant seeds. And we are not to damage someone's walk. And when we, when our walk is messy and ugly, especially if we're on a platform like social media, standing on our soapbox with a megahorn, megaphone, Shouting, I'm a Christian while I'm casting judgment and throwing stones at people. Not only have you not saved any souls, but you've literally stifled some. In a time where social media has become run rampant amongst all of our people. Either use it for sharing love and kindness, connecting with a buddy, finding something to chuckle about, or even promoting your business. All these are good. Don't use it for spreading division. Don't use it for thumping your Bible at people. Don't use it to judge or throw stones. It, it, it wraps up here in Philippians 2.15. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God. Children of God without fault. Those who are blameless and pure without fault in a crooked and depraved generation. Oh, we're in it, baby. In which you shine like stars in the universe. That's how you shape. That's how you save souls. You shine like a star. You're a beacon amongst the ugliness. I challenge each and every one of you, myself included, I've done it. I've done it countless times. I get caught up in a something on social media. I, I feel like I'm having a discussion with some someone. We're just conversing. And before I know it, I'm like, wait a second, we're debating. And what I said in a simple text could have been taken in a very wrong tone. I've had to catch myself many times. So I challenge you right now to take all that to heart as I challenge myself. We as Christians, if we truly want to make a difference, a good difference, if we want to actually help people on their path instead of steer them away from God, Let's get it right. Let's do what that pastor, Pastor Monger. Let's do what Pastor did. Didn't condemn. I never heard him spoke, speak an ugly word about anyone, actually. Never once. Yeah, I never heard that man complain. He was so joyful to make it to America and to be freely worshiping Jesus. He used one of our classrooms upstairs. And he had other people that he helped escape Nepal to come and worship in his little congregation. And eventually his congregation kept growing and growing. And he had huge, huge services. But I never heard him speak an ugly word about anyone. I never heard him criticize, condemn, not even frown upon anyone. He was too busy smiling. You could feel the love and the presence of Jesus every time you were just near him. He just knew he carried Jesus with him. Let's do that. Let's get it right. So today, go get it right. Carry this with you. Tomorrow, get it right.
each day just do better than you did the day before and when you make mistakes because you will I will we all will recognize them don't be so caught up in your own head in your own stubbornness and your own pride that you're like I can't say I got it wrong let's do better all right it's your boy like subscribe share this with a friend share this with a family member you're not the only one who needs to hear this. This is important. Maybe one of the most important posts I've ever done. Let's do better. It's your boy. I love y'all. Let's go be blessed today. Count every blessing we get.